Early in his career, Peter Swinburne took a cue from his bottoms-up industry and worked his way from the bottom rung all the way up to the C-suite. The Molson Corps' president and CEO joins me to talk about his humble beginnings and life as a British native leading America's second largest brewing company. Peter, welcome. Thanks so much for being here. Yeah, great to be here. Thank you. So you grew up in a very supportive um, family environment. Your father served in the British Navy. Your mom was a sales clerk um, in an electrical goods shop. Um, how did your family life shape the way and the kind of leader that you would ultimately be? I think like most families, they, they give you the values, uh -huh. um, and those values stand you in good stead. Um, basically being self-sufficient, uh, being a, a social animal, um, making sure that you, you help society if you can, uh, but also taking on personal responsibility. So mm -hmm. they were the values we had. You, I love your story because you've been in the industry for many years. You started out um, at Bass Brewing Company where you um, peddled beer to pubs and clubs. Um, and now, you know, you're sitting at the helm of America's second largest brewing company. What did those early years in the industry teach you about the industry that you would spend your life in? But what it teaches you is that the people who actually uh, pay for your product um, keep you in a job. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, also it teaches you that as you go through the organization, many people do incredible work in an organization and respecting that, mm -hmm. respecting the work that everybody does and how important it is, uh, I think is a great thing to be able to do. It's a privilege to have, have been able to work through the industry. So what did those early years, how did it um, maybe ignite a spark in you to want to pursue a career in this industry? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not difficult, it's the beer industry. Um, so um, it's a social industry, uh, it's a people industry, mm -hmm. but also it's fiercely competitive and, and yeah. there's that element of me as well. I love com competition, I love winning, um, and it's a very, very intense industry and you have to be good to win. And I think uh, winning in something that is intense and difficult is very, very satisfying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you oversaw the company during the merger between Molson and Coors. Um, what was the biggest challenge that faced you in kind of bringing those two very family-run businesses together into one company? Well, the biggest challenge initially, undoubtedly, was culture. Yeah. Um, uh, we had different cultures from the United Kingdom, from Canada, uh, from the U.S. And bringing those cultures together into one Molson Coors culture yeah. and for al aligning the whole business on where we wanted to go was, was the initial big challenge. But that's turned in, actually, to our, our biggest um, ben benefit, a yeah. big benefit. Uh -huh. That's really interesting. Um, when Bass was sold to Coors, uh, you took over as the international in its international business. And then in 2008, you became president and CEO of the combined company. That was right at the beginning of the Great Recession in America. So maybe when people weren't really looking, they were trying to save money, maybe weren't looking toward these extras that they could buy. So they're saving money. Um, how did you navigate the company through those challenging times to come out on top in the end? Yeah, my timing has always been perfect. <laughs> um, by doing the things we talked about, now, you, you have to have a business that believes in itself. Yeah. And that belief is usually framed in its culture and where it's trying to get to. Um, that holds the business together. Then you have to run the business day to day. Yeah. And the reality is that when uh, the external environment is tough, you, you, have to, you have to do a couple of things. You have to concentrate on what's really important. And to us, brands are important. So investing behind our brands, innovating, being creative, Mm -hmm. satisfying the consumer, focusing all the time on the consumer, and keeping your costs as, as low as you possibly can. The, oh. the idea is that whenever you go, and because I've been in the industry a long time, I've been through a number of recessions, the, the idea always is that you keep investing in what's going to make the business successful when you come out of the recession. Mm -hmm. And that's why, we're, that's why I think we're so well positioned now. Um, our brands have done well, we've cut our costs, we've generated a lot of cash, and we're very well positioned for, for an improving economic environment. Well, I'm curious how you kind of wound up with your leadership style. I was reading that you're not the kind of CEO who everybody dreads coming in to, to see the, <laughs> you know, where they're working. They don't feel like they have to um, make up, you know, put a fresh facade on things. You really want to see people um, in their true environment and you're not afraid to get in there and work with the people, you know, who work for you. So how did you shape that leadership style for yourself? I think it comes from, from, again, growing up in the industry and, and being 
being hands-on. I mean, for, you know, as you, as you mentioned, I used, to, I used to visit clubs on a Sunday morning and put beer in the back of my car and deliver it. Um, you know, when I ran pubs, I used to, if the uh, landlord was busy, I'd go behind the bar and help him. Um, it's being part of a team. And, and the, one of the ethos that we, uh, the, we have in the organization is that you know, the team comes first. It's not about the individual. And I think that you have to shape that from the top. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so what would be your best piece of advice to um, anybody, you know, the younger generation who are maybe looking to get into a job, um, trying to find where they might fit, uh, you know, what career they're looking for. What's your best piece of advice? Oh, do something you enjoy because you won't be successful at it otherwise. Yeah. Do something that's in, that interests you mm -hmm. um, because it, it won't work otherwise. Yeah, you might earn a lot of money, but you won't be happy. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Peter, thank you so much for coming in today. Appreciate it. Thank you.